Hi everyone, my name is Cyrus Heddle. I'm a fourth year PhD student in the Algorithms, Combinatorics and Optimization program at Georgia Tech. And I'm excited to be speaking to you today about some of our recent work on balanced compact and contiguous districting. So this is a joint work with my advisor Swati Gupta, as well as our collaborators Yao Xie and Qi Xiang Zhu. So I'll start by giving an overview of districting problems in general uh, with uh, related work and our, our uh, goals. I'll then uh, describe some of our algorithmic techniques on various settings of districting. So for unweighted and weighted graphs, as well as simulated annealing methods and stochastic methods for uh, random weights. And then I'll examine some computational results on our methods uh, both on some synthetic examples and for real world examples for uh, South Fulton City emergency services. So what are districting problems uh, in general? So uh, the most uh, classic and familiar example is uh, given a map uh, divided into regions, we want to group those regions into uh, larger parts such that those parts have some uh, desired properties. And applications of this are many and varied. Uh, in civic applications for schools, police, emergent, other emergency services, uh, waste, uh, for political districting uh, and gerrymandering, and even in parallel computing for many instances where uh, computations must be done on a large uh, mesh network, uh, and then a divide and conquer approach must be uh, taken to divide this network into smaller pieces uh, that can each be tackled individually. So there are several themes that uh, run across all of these uh, instances and are really ubiquitous. Uh, first, all the parts that we create should be approximately equally sized um, in some sense. They should each be a single connected piece. We don't want parts that have a little bit here, a little bit there and we want good compactness, uh, which we can measure, say, with a low perimeter or in a graph model with a low number of cut edges. Um, this could, uh, high compactness can mean uh, low travel time for emergency services, uh, low uh, cross contamination and interaction between parts in a parallel computing instance, um, and so forth. And this is a classical and very well studied problem. There's many heuristics and algorithms uh, so integer programming approaches, uh, local search methods, region growing, uh, k-means methods, more graph theoretic approaches that involve many applications and then of min cuts and separated or algorithms and then recombinations of those pieces and so on. So let's look at uh, a particular problem statement which we're gonna focus on, uh, which is uh, generally thematic. So we take as input a graph um, with all the vertices having some non-negative weight. We're given a desired number of parts, which is a natural number, as well as some balance parameter epsilon, uh, which is non-negative. And our goal is to find a partition, a districting of the vertex set into exactly k parts, such that the subgraph induced by each part is connected, so contiguity. The total weight of each part is within epsilon fraction of the average part weight A, so balance, and then our objective is going to be to minimize the number of cut edges between parts, which is the compactness. And our goal is to develop algorithms that meet these three objectives of balance, compactness, and contiguity, while still having uh, polynomial runtime, unlike heuristic methods, uh, unlike methods such as uh, integer programming, uh, that have good practical performance and that have provable guarantees on performance, unlike uh, local search methods um, or uh, some kinds of uh, k-means. And we're going to consider uh, several different types of uh, weight scenarios for the vertices. So unweighted vertices, where all of, they all have a uniform constant weight. Weighted vertice, uh, vertices, where these weights can vary and we'll also continue, uh, consider a stochastic setting where these weights are not known to us ahead of time, but are instead drawn from uh, independent random distributions, XV, where these 
distributions uh, may vary from vertex to vertex. So let's uh, look at some algorithmic techniques now. And we'll start with the simplest instance, which is unweighted graphs. So in particular, we'll look at unweighted grid graphs, which are uh, uh, give, uh, come with a great number of uh, geometric benefits, but are also uh, very amenable to many applications. Uh, for instance, uh, in, in many uh, types of civic applications, we can overlay a grid graph onto some uh, geographical region or map uh, and use that to obtain our vertices and our, and our graph and then solve the partitioning problem on this graph. And uh, in the geometry of this setting, if we have an unweighted grid graph where epsilon is zero, where we require perfect balance, um, this means in particular, every part must have exactly A vertices. And what we can say in this setting is that a minimum perimeter part has, um, is square or almost square and has perimeter exactly this quantity two times ce uh, ceiling of two root A. And one uh, technique introduced by Christo and Meyer in the 90s for uh, creating partitions in this setting is known as striping. Uh, so here's illustrated one stripe. You can think of it um, as one uh, slice or one strata, perhaps out of a larger graph. And uh, in this case, we're trying to divide this four vertex tall stripe into 15 vertex pieces. So to do so, we will travel down the columns, moving left to right from column to column. And we'll follow this path until we've accrued 15 vertices. 15 vertices is our part size. And at this point, we stop and call that part done and then continue on. So we'll continue going across the columns until we've accrued 15 more vertices. Again, we'll cut it off and we'll continue in this way until we've uh, broken the whole uh, slice into uh, uh, four uh, pieces each with exactly 15 vertices. And you can see because we chose this stripe to have a height four, all of these pieces are close to square, about as close as you can get for a 15 vertex part. So uh, we have extended uh, and adapted uh, this method to an algorithm that we're, we call fee cautious striping. So in particular, this extends to uh, epsilon greater than or equal to zero and guarantees contiguity, whereas the Christo and Meyer approach does not. And um, so this gives us balance and contiguity uh, are guaranteed and our Compactness condition, we're guaranteed um, the number of cut edges is at most uh, 15 and a quarter times opt, um, asymptotically um, approaches opt. And in the specific case where an epsilon equals zero, uh, it's an even better approximation and improves Christo and Meyer's relative error bound by a factor of more than six. But of course, in many applications, vertices will have weights, maybe representing more people. Um, more uh, demand for resources at a particular uh, point in space. So um, these striping approaches don't uh, translate immediately because we can't say uh, each part has a fixed number of vertices. So um, instead we give a dynamic uh, uh, programming based algorithm uh, that can be applied to any weighted Hamiltonian graph. It takes as additional input an ordering of the vertices of the graph uh, has very fast running time, uh, order uh, number of vertices times number of edges times the number of parts, and it yields a contiguous balanced partition uh, and it has an exact guarantee that it is the minimum cut size over all partitions whose parts are consecutive subpaths of our chosen path, which is an input. And for grid graphs, um, we can use the striping method to get paths that uh, yield excellent results in practice. So the striping approaches are in some sense a global one shot. They look at the graph and then act, but sometimes this results in uh, some local imperfections where we can maybe go in and do better. And so for that, we've developed some simulated annealing methods, uh, a local search that can um, be applied with um, results of our other algorithms or uh, as a warm start, for instance. So for these, we'll have a sequence of partitions, um, Pn, and for, at each step, Pn, 
we'll have a feasible candidate set of, uh, of partitions and then we'll draw one of those um, randomly uh, where the ch 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 uh, chance of choosing a partition uh, depends on its uh, balance and compactness. And to search for partitions that are somehow ad adjacent to our current partition PN that we can move to, we consider neighborhood swaps like those depicted um, on this slide. So we can take two parts next to each other and look at various ways that we might uh, shift or redraw the boundary between those two parts um, in such a way that we maintain balance and hopefully improve that or improve our compactness. And finally, in the stochastic case, um, in this setting, we have um, a known independent distribution XV for each vertex V. And so we obviously can't guarantee balance on um, any particular draw of uh, values from these random distributions, but we'd like to have a guarantee on the uh, expected value of this, and indeed we can do so. And uh, we adapt the methods of Kleinberg et al. originally for online stochastic load balancing. Um, so in, in this method, um, we start with these distributions and iteratively have them until the parts of these distributions that take value uh, greater than one are very small. Using the parts of these random variables that are at most one, uh, we create our new weights W, feed these into our uh, partitioning algorithm of choice. Um, and if that partitioning algorithm yields balanced parts, uh, we have a guarantee that the expected size of whatever of the biggest part in our partition is uh, order one times uh, opt for this metric. So let's look now at a couple of computational results for these methods. So first let's look at a synthetic example of our dynamic programming approach. So on a 100 by 100 grid graph, which we'd like to divide into 100 parts, uh, each with um, total weight um, within 2% of the average, so epsilon is uh, 0.02, uh, we've generated a smooth uh, distribution of weights that you can see on the left, so um, varying uh, considerably over the whole range, but uh, generally similar uh, nearby vertices have similar weights. And uh, this dynamic um, programming approach using a striping method to generate a path as input performs quite well. It's, uh, it, in, in, as you can see, it achieves uh, balance and contiguity. And the number of cut edges is within 6.4% of what we would achieve if we simply broke the grid into 10 by 10 squares, um, which in this case certainly would not achieve uh, uh, ba the balance condition. And you can notice, for instance, that where uh, the vertex weights are lower, for instance, like in the bottom left, we correspondingly have much larger parts in the partition. And this ran in under an hour. And second, uh, we apply our methods to districting problems for emergency services in South Fulton City, Georgia. Uh, in particular, we look at uh, the fire department where uh, there are 10 fire stations um, throughout the city. Um, and so we can think of each district as a zone to which that fire station has responsibilities and will uh, deal with any um, emergencies that arise there. So the left uh, shows the location of the fire stations as well as the uh, red dots showing the locations of all the incidents in South Fulton. Uh, which you can see are concentrated in the northeast and southeast. We create a striping path um, through this, uh, shown a second from the left, um, by breaking the uh, superimposed grid into smaller rectangle-like pieces and striping through those. And uh, by applying this, our partitions reduce the maximum deviation from the mean um, by over half and maintain contiguity and increase the number of cut edges by a fairly negligible amount. So, uh, here are some references uh, on uh, districting and districting methods. Uh, thank you so much. 
and uh, I would appreciate any questions. Thank you.